United losing to Barcelona at home. No surprise there, really, for the most part. Um, I think coming into the game, and maybe even with the you know incredible um, comeback that we did against Paris Saint-Germain, I think we kind of got brought back down to earth a little bit with the two defeats against Wolves in the FA Cup and in the league. Um, and a little scruffy result. I forgot who we won against in between, but we had a little scruffy result in between. But I think we got pulled down back to earth a little bit. And I think it was good because what we saw with those performances against Wolves and stuff was that even though um, Tosha was coming and restored the kind of good feeling around the club, you still can't account for having really poor players in the most vital positions. I still think... Um, and I think that's probably what we needed overall. I think Mourinho, what Mourinho did in general, which was probably the the worst thing he could have done was that he spoiled the morale. And then on top of that, the players that he wanted weren't there and he didn't necessarily rate the ones that he had, right? So he kind of just played them because he had no other choice. Um, you kind of got that feeling. So he kind of didn't really give them confidence to go out there and perform. But what we're seeing with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is that he's given the shit players in our teams confidence, but they just haven't got the ability to do what we want them to do, right? Um, you look at our centre-backs and, you know, apart from Lindelof, really, no one really comes out. And even Lindelof doesn't really do it that often. No one comes out with the ball enough into midfield and kind of uh, um, is an extra man in midfield to kind of thread the ball through to the midfielders, which would, never, which would never inevitably push everyone up the field a bit more. If you see us play, um, our centre-backs usually pass it along a straight line back and forth to each other. They hardly ever, ever push it forward. Or bring it forward up the pitch. If only maybe Lindelof does it. Smalling's not really his natural position. Hence why Smalling doesn't play for England anymore because Gareth Southgate doesn't think he's good enough on the ball. Then you look at our, our left backs. Luke Shaw is good, but we don't necessarily have a, a threat on the other side that can kind of really attack that line. Uh, Ashley Young just isn't good enough. His passing ability is really poor. That's the thing, Ashley Young, which just surprised me really. I think we always assumed he wouldn't be a good defender because he's you know he's a, basically a converted um, winger in that respect. Um, but he's just not good at even delivering the ball. Even his crosses are garbage. I would have thought a converted right winger into a right back would maybe not be good going back, going backwards, right? Like defending against an out-and-out winger. But once given the opportunity to put a ball into the box would be amazing. In the same, in the same vein as um, a Kieran Trippier, right? He's not the best of defenders, but he's really good going forward, right? He, his delivery inside the box is amazing, right? Um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a dead ball specialist as we saw with England. But we don't get that Ashley Young. Even his short passing range, just to feet, is off. Like, he's crossing it off. Everything's just off. Then you look at midfield. We probably have a, a decent enough midfield, but we still probably don't lack the magic we need. Like, um, again, it's not. It's a bit of a stretch to say we need a hazard, but someone in the team that can do the unpredictable can kind of, like, take it forward and kind of do a bit of magic. We don't necessarily have that. And up front, maybe, we don't really necessarily have an option. It would be good to have an option that... A, a Lukaku that wasn't a Lukaku, somebody that could hold up because Lukaku is a weird player because he looks like a drug, but he doesn't play like a drug. But he's a he's a kind of striker that plays with the last shoulder of a defender. He's more of a he's more in the Michael Owen, uh, Chikorito kind of vein of fame where he's looking for that ball in and around around the defender through the gaps over the top. He's not necessarily looking to kind of bring it down like a Lewandowski, um, hit into midfield and kind of run into the area. He's not necessarily looking to do what um. What Ronaldo did for his goal against Ajax, right? Receives the ball in the middle of the park, turns, uh, uh, spreads it out wide, runs into the area, the ball comes in and he kind of heads it. That's not really his play. He's more like, you know, a quintessential kind of number nine striker. But it'd be good if we had that. So those are the deficiencies. I guess against Barcelona, we saw that too. But the interesting part about Barcelona was that, yes, people will say they didn't get out of second gear. You know, they were just strolling. But they didn't look as devastating as I thought they did. The Barcelona we faced, I think, in 2011... We're a far better team than what we have here, of course, because that was probably their pump. But it didn't look that great, right? I think if you're Man City or Liverpool, um, Man City, Liverpool, or Tottenham, I think you're gonna fancy your chances playing against Barcelona. They're not the they're not the side that we once knew. Obviously, they've got the X factor of Messi. They've got Suarez. You can always damage. Um, um, what you got to punish you. Rakitic is somebody you can never really uh, take for granted. But by and large, you don't necessarily have the weapons that you'd think they would do. Maybe. Um, uh, Dembele off the bench, Vidal was pretty useless when he came on. Um, I like the look at Arthur, but by and large, it wasn't that great, Barcelona. And I think if if we were better, if we had a if we had a shooting boots on, if we were a bit more clinical, if Rashford wasn't coming back from an injury, if Martial didn't come off the bench cold, if maybe Pogba was able to take the game by scruff his neck, which he still ain't capable to do, we might have been able to scab a result in that game. But I just think we we didn't we lacked that bit of magic in the final third to really punish them or to really kind of go for. Barcelona's jugular. 
But what I like, again, what I said before, with the regards to Solskjaer, um appointment, I see some fans on social bemoaning his tactics and then you got it wrong. I don't really give a shit about that sort of stuff. He tried to do something. It didn't work out. I think for the most part, tactics maybe impact, I don't know, the first 30 minutes of the game, for me, in my opinion. And then after that, most players, especially the top ones, are, are adept or are willing to kind of go to the manager, go to the coaches and tell them, look, this ain't working. Let's change it or change themselves on the pitch, right? Not necessarily a thing that I don't think tactics are always the, the reason why teams lose. They can play a part in it. But if you're a top team, players should be able to adapt to what's going on in the field. But what I like about Oligar Solskjaer and what I think he's done really well is that he's given players ultimatums. He's also given them a platform to kind of show why they should still be at the club and why they should maybe, um, you know, who should earn a deal and who shouldn't earn a deal. And I think the opportunity he's given to Scott McTominay, Scott McTominay, sorry, the opportunity he's given to Fred, the opportunity he's given to Dallo playing in the kind of, you know, advanced wing-back role, um, I think is something that should be really um, spoken about a bit more highly. Like, Scott McTominay was fucking awesome. Even though we lost, he probably on my man the match. He was amazingly good, man. I thought he was quite limited technically, but he's improved. He really, I think a lot of these kind of players, Fletcher Flex, was the same. A lot of those kind of bang average players, they usually perform a lot better when they're surrounded by better players. They step up a bit more because they don't want to disappoint their teammates, right? They have a they have a, a real big sense of pride, right? They don't want to let anyone down. So the better players you surround them with, the better they perform. Fletcher was the same as that, right? Whenever he started into midfield playing alongside Ronaldo, Tevez, Runo, he played really well. But the moment it was like a he was playing within a second team and he was what he was um, asked to be the leader and he had a captain's armband on, that's when he gets to see his kind of level. But he was always he always performed freakishly well against a better team. Same like Jisham Jisham Park, for instance, right? And so Alex Ferguson like loved to play him against the top teams because he always brought the best out of him. And Scott McTominay was awesome. Like he covered every blade of grass. He kind of followed Messi around all over the pitch. When he got on the ball, he was really good. He held on to it. He won fouls. He tackled well. He was aggressive on the ball. Just in general, a really good player. And he kind of gave the op- the license for Pogba to kind of, you know, get a bit more forward up the pitch. And again, Pogba wasn't as good as he should have been. First half, he played really well. Second half, he kind of died down. I think he kind of got a bit discouraged with us on the keeping the ball too often. Um, and of course, Fred. Fred was great, man. Um, being the screen behind the defence, like spreading it out wide, like amazingly good. If anything, is a bit frustrating, Fred, because he doesn't really bring the ball forward as much as I hope he would. Um, some he was doing a couple of incisive passes um through the lines uh kind of you know the low, he did like a really good no look pass the second half that kind of rashford kind of um, didn't be latch onto properly but in general fred played really well so so well that i think he kind of again earned his opportunity to kind of get given a second chance this next season right a full preseason with a new manager hopefully with a, a couple of new additions we'll probably see the best out of him um, and again, the second leg is probably a misnomer. I'm not really expecting much of it. I don't really think we're going to go to the new camp and turn them over. But again, this is football. You never know what may happen. But what again, like I think what I think um, has happened with um, the Oligon and Solskjaer appointment is that we just got a bit more confidence in us, right? We just feel as if like we can go to these clubs, we can go to these stadiums and we can um, we can give a good account of ourselves, right? And I think in general, um, having a taste of this football, um, of the Champions League so having a taste of rubbing shoulders against the elite having a taste of just how short we're coming up against these teams and our lack of quality because players know right you play with a team you know you know how shit you are you know if you're kind of you know if you're punch away above your way I think the players are well aware of that but I think next season or I think no this season whilst we're playing the players are going to be determined to make sure that we get back into Champions League next season so that the new additions that come into it will give them a better opportunity to kind of rewrite the wrongs of this season going going forward but again maybe Solskjaer got his tactics wrong maybe he was a bit um, conservative in the first half but you can't blame him considering the weapons that uh, Barcelona had if we went toe-to-toe with them we would have probably got spanked 3-0 let's not kid ourselves about that um, but I think oh, all in all I think we fought back pretty well after the early goal the early goal was sloppy as fuck but you know we got those. We we were playing Smalling and Lindelof from centre back. Like I don't think we can really get too um um what you call it missed by that. If we're gonna get you know if we're gonna get done over by you know clever balls over the top and Messi kind of spring in no look crossover. Yeah, I mean I can't think we can get too annoyed by it. But I think overall it was a great um performance by us. A disappointing result. Hope we it probably would have been advantageous to get a goal, get a draw. It might have been an accurate representation of the game overall i don't think barcelona were that good we might have got the better opportunities in general but by and large i don't think barcelona came out of second gear we didn't really take opportunity of that and let's see what happens the second leg going forward